Oh yeah. Yeah. We've been in, out on PC since September of last year. Mm -hmm. And then, yeah, we've got our console release coming up soon, hopefully. So. Mm -hmm. and we've been playing this weekend and it's a lot of fun, but it's really, I play lots of, I guess Gran Turismo lately is the racing game that I play a lot of. Okay. Because my friend got me into it, but I don't know, he's, he like watches people race online to like get the, the perfect braking and turns and stuff. And I don't have time sure. for that. So I just try to yeah. figure it out myself. <laughs> Are you playing on like the more modern Gran Turismo's or the classic ones? Um, the new uh, Gran Turismo Sport, but he does. So my friend does like online races with real people, and then I just do the campaign against the computer. It's easier. Oh, cool. <laughs> yeah. Art of Rally is a lot of fun, and I love. I don't know. It's it looks like simple and cartoony, but it feels it feels like real and immersive. And then I love the little stick people. Yeah, I think I got to like one of those levels later on. I was like, I'm gonna kill all of them, but it's funny how they just all get out of the way. Right. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Um. Well, it says you're the creative producer on the game. What, is, mm -hmm. what does that mean, or what do you? What does that entail? I guess. So, creative producer actually, that title comes more from um, kind of like film. That's where it's mm -hmm. traditionally used, and in film just just like we kind of do here and what I've done in the past is a kind of catch-all producer term so that for me I have a creative background so I tend to lean more into the creative stuff that needs to get taken care of whether that be sourcing artists or just managing artists or I even sometimes have to like help edit a trailer or make brand new assets for something like we just recently worked on new key art for the game mm -hmm. and so part of that was on me um, but a lot of it is very like creatively focused. Um, and then on the other side of that, there's also, you know, the basic day-to-day -day stuff of like answering emails, handling PR requests, um, task management, just general, like your usual producery kind of stuff on top of that. Mm -hmm. well, I checked out um, your website and there's like a lot of cool work, but it reminds, I went to the at Miami ad school. So we had a oh, lot of cool. people that studied graphic design and then I was a copywriter, but it reminded me of like people's portfolios from school, just putting like fun projects up and like cool right stuff on, yeah. they worked on. Yeah, I've done my last job before this was very much focused on streaming, which you probably saw in my portfolio. But mm -hmm. um, yeah, a lot of the stuff that I've done has been in the kind of like streaming film realm. And then before that was actually, I started in the games industry as a UI designer. Mm -hmm. um and so i did that for probably six ish years before deciding that i absolutely hated it and wanted to become <laughs> a producer instead so uh made that tr transition uh, about six years ago okay but well, then you get to work on like all different types of aspects of of like making a game instead of just the one the ui thing yeah my my thing with ui was um ui and game development tends to be the the, at the very bottom of everything all the time. And so no engineer wants to work on it. And, um, you know, you go through like seven or eight iterations of the UI before the last 10% of the game needs to get done. And then you finally do the last one. And it just kind of makes you feel like you're at the bottom too, which is a, a huge bummer every day. Mm -hmm. um, but I really, I also don't like just being locked behind a desk. And yeah. so being a producer means I get to get up and move around all the time. And I'm, I've always got my hands in different things here and there. Mm -hmm. um, I guess how many people worked on the game, like the design of the game and everything like that, or actually like building the game? Yeah, so largely just Dune. Um, Dune worked on the game for six years. Mm -hmm. And um, I don't know how much you've read about the background of the game but yeah, it's a he, little bit okay yeah he um so i i've known dune for six years actually almost mm -hmm. seven and the, i got to see the very first iteration of art of rally six years ago when he came to visit my wife and i and he at the time was kind of like driving all over the the u.s up and down like the west coast doing bike racing and all kinds of stuff but during that time um he had just sort of started working on Art of Rally as like an idea. 
Mm -hmm. right coming right off of absolute drift and um he had this plan in mind that he was gonna retrofit a van and you know put a bed in it and make it just this whole mobile suite for him that he could live in and he ended up doing that and so the development of the game was actually largely done in his van uh kind of driving all over the u.s and canada and mexico um and that was pretty much all him for that six year period up until uh, I think Adrian was the first person to join the team only a couple of weeks before I did back in August of 2020. Um, and then more and more people got, got brought on. We're, we're a team of, um, I think it's eight now. Mm-hmm. Um, but largely, yeah, it's just all been Dune up until that point like everyone who got brought on was brought on because there was stuff that needed to get done before the pc release and um yeah and he drove did he drive in like finland and germany and these countries that are in the game or just mostly here the actually when he yeah when he came to visit us uh so my wife and i live in seattle Mm -hmm. um and we're pretty close to Dirtfish, which is a rally school here in Washington. And so when he drove out here, it was actually to go to Dirtfish. So oh. um, he went to that rally school. I think it was a weekend session and actually got to get behind the wheel of a rally car and like do the lessons and everything. And then I think it was in, I want to say 2017 or it was later, later in the timeline, he actually ended up going to um, Australia and New Zealand and driving uh, rally cars there's there as well so he has some experience behind the wheel with rally cars but um i think a lot of locations in the game are just kind of based on real world locations for for rallies just kind of classic mm-hmm. locations for absolute drift he he made that game on his own too or yep. started on his own did he yep. do rally or anything before that or he was just always like into cars and then uh, this one he kind of yeah it's just all just a big car fanatic really. <laughs> <laughs> yeah and i love like the cars all have well some of them have like fun and silly names too mm-hmm. i mean a lot of that has to do with licensing <laughs> yeah <laughs> obviously you can't, <laughs> can't get the licenses for all the cars um so yeah it, i think a lot of the a lot of the flavor in there is you know comes from dune and um the uh you know the buddha statue that pops up at the beginning of the game and, mm-hmm. and all of that is all kind of dunes flavor that he injects in there yeah um, no the game has a lot to do also like there's the career mode that i was going to start but then i was i'm not ready for this so i started doing yeah. the custom rallies and then to um i guess early this morning i tried driving like with the fastest cars and i was mm. just crashing everywhere and then it but now when i went back to like the slower cars i was doing a lot better Oh, nice. Yeah. Like a learning curve. Yeah. I always find <laughs> uh, for new players, it's actually, we start you on, you know, group two, which mm-hmm. is pretty slow, but there it's a lot more difficult to sort of whip the car into a, a drift. Yeah. And so I actually suggest for new players to just go straight to time attack and try out time, uh, group B because mm-hmm. group B just, they slide all over the place like butter. So once you get that, then you can get the rest of the game. Mm-hmm. And what do you think is, I guess the perfect balance for driving because there's like driving like pedal all the way or there's like I guess braking versus e-braking and then like drifting versus trying to make the turns. Yeah, I think that's kind of the neat thing about rallies. There's so many different racing techniques that all boil down into the sport. Mm -hmm. Um, A lot of people say like going slow is going fast in rally. So you really want to make sure that you're approaching a turn slower than you think, especially in Art of Rally where that top-down view kind of makes it more a little bit more difficult to judge what your actual top speed is. And so you kind of want to go slower than you think you should be going. Um, But yeah, approaching a turn, you know, also the, the gear that you're in kind of determines how wide you're going to turn or drift um so for a really really tight one you want to be in like first gear and for a big wide one you want to be in higher third or fourth gear um so that's usually what i tell people is like pay attention to what gear you're in even if you're an automatic like you can just Mm -hmm. slow down until you get to the gear that you think you need to hit yeah and then take your turn Mm -hmm. 
No, there was or there was a while ago that PlayStation gave out I think Dirt, one of the Dirt games. Mm-hmm. And I was trying the I think it was a Dirt game, maybe a different rally game, but it was like they had the passenger in the car telling you what the next turn was. They're like right, yeah, like a left driver. and then a right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But I like that this doesn't have a map or anything, so you're kind of just guessing. Like there was a part where it was just a long straightaway, and I was going, and then it there was a mountain blocking the turn, and the turn was just like a perfect L. And yeah. Just flew off the track. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like I wasn't ready for that. <laughs> yeah, totally. It's funny because we had someone recently actually mod the game to bring the camera down closer to that more traditional racing perspective that you Mm -hmm. get in like a dirt game. And the whole reason that the game is top down is so that we don't have to have a co-driver co-driver is completely removed from that. So bringing the camera back down again is like, well, you're just kind of making it much more difficult for yourself since you can't (laughs) see anything. No, then I tried it on my MacBook because I saw it was for Mac, but it played better on the PC. But Like my MacBook's new, but I don't know if maybe just gaming on the Mac feels different because I'm not used to it. Yeah, I think the, the game also requires higher specs than you think. Mm-hmm. A lot of there's, you know, such a long draw distance in the game and lots of props and grass and trees and all that. And then the lighting is a really big thing for us. Um, so, yeah, even on my old machine, like I have an, an older machine that uses a stream machine, it's like an i7 with a 2070 in it. Mm-hmm. And it performs really well. But the best experience I've gotten out of it is my new machine, which is a 3950x and a 3090 so (laughs) it is completely like maxed it out um Mm -hmm. but yeah we've seen good performance on the the console so we're really happy about Mm -hmm. that for sure that's good and then is it going to be tricky on switch with like the since the stick is is more digital i mean the the trigger yeah so i've put quite a bit of time into the switch version and i think the big thing is just um and i actually do this on every version but basically tapping everything. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, I think I ended up doing that. That I use an Xbox controller on my PC, but I, I was doing more tapping also in this. Yeah. So like, yeah, when you're hitting that turn, just tapping the gas and tapping the stick at the same time, you'll be able to lock in those turns. But um, that's a difficult thing, again, that I think a lot of new players run into is like mm-hmm. they want to turn, so they just push the stick in one direction and hold it. Yeah. And that's not, <laughs> you're going to just you know, fishtail all over the place if you end up doing that. So mm-hmm. I like that. I guess the game looks so simple, but it's also really complicated. Yeah. Like you wouldn't expect it to be so hard or like maybe not hard, but like you have to kind of master it to yeah. learn how to drive the cars. Yeah, mm-hmm. absolutely. I mean, it's still got, you know, techniques that rally drivers would use. Like Scandinavian flick is a, a big thing in, in rally racing and you can, do that and you should do that in an art of rally as well have you started watching more rally racing since you were working on this game or were you into it before i have i <laughs> grew up with it a little bit um just watching like dakar when it was on tv um, mm-hmm. and some other rally races here and there my best friend growing up was super into cars and rally and so just by osmosis i got some of that um and kind of fell off of it later and just recently i got my wrc subscription so i've been watching the latest season oh. um and you know trying to catch back up with it again i'm personally more into the drifting scene than i am in in rally but i i'm like getting much more into rally now i think it's just <laughs> fun and i play all the rally games that come out anyway yeah um, even like you were saying in gran turismo like i'm i'm always looking for the rally tracks in gran turismo mm-hmm. Um, so I, I grew up on those as well. The Gran Turismo 2 rally tracks were super fun. Um, yeah. Yeah. No, the other day after whatever, the first day I played this last week, then I went back to Gran Turismo and went to the rally races. <laughs> yeah. Like I usually do the street, but I jumped in for the rally to try it again. Yeah, definitely. Those yeah. are a lot of fun. And yeah. I, but... I kind of want to download Dirt again and try it out because I tried it a little bit, but, but then yeah, went I back. just. <laughs> fired up uh dirt two the other day and yeah it's tough but it's it's a lot of fun And then I want to 
you, I guess, more about yourself. Like mm-hmm. when you were growing up, what was, was your gaming history or how you like with playing games as a kid when you started and if you played throughout your whole adulthood or if you like took a break or anything and like gaming memories or specific yeah. games you loved? Yeah. Um, so I was kind of a Nintendo kid growing up. So mm-hmm. I basically had most of the Nintendo consoles. Um, and so a lot like Super Nintendo is kind of my base. That's the thing that I, I always go back to. Yeah, me too. Um, yeah, it's just an incredible <laughs> system. And there's so many like gems on that system. Mm-hmm. Um, so I ended up going back to that a lot. And then eventually when I got a PS1, it was like, okay, this is a whole new something. There's like a whole new aesthetic around it, right? Like just the way that PS1 games look. Yeah. Um, and obviously there's a big revival of that style right now um, in indie games, which is really cool. Um, and so now it's kind of like that and like the Dreamcast. And I have a Dreamcast sitting on my desk right now, actually. Oh. <laughs> um, that's another one of my favorite systems. So I've, I've been playing games throughout my whole life. And then actually up until in high school, I got really into competitive gaming. That was kind of when esports was first starting out with uh, StarCraft II. Mm-hmm. And so I actually got into uh, Counter-Strike 1.6 and played uh, semi-professionally. And then uh, Halo PC when that came out and was semi-professional on Halo PC as well. And kind of fell off the competitive scene a little bit. And in 2011, when, um, uh, or sorry, Brood War, Brood War before StarCraft II in 2011, um, when StarCraft II came out, I jumped back into it like he- head first. And my wife and I actually tried to open an esports bar here in Seattle in 2013. Mm-hmm. Um, and so that was a whole long process of trying to open that and kind of started a small competitive scene here in the Seattle area. Um, unfortunately we, we got like super close to signing a lease for our bar and then our investor the day before backed out because he had an opportunity in China. And so he uh-huh. was like, sorry, <laughs> going to take my money and move to China instead. And he kind of <laughs> just left us high and dry. And that was kind of the end of that, um, which is unfortunate. Uh, Mm -hmm. But shortly after, I started working at Disney, and when I worked at Disney, I met my ex-business partner, and he got me super into fighting games, and so that was kind of like the next competitive scene that I got into, and that's kind of the biggest one that I've been into since then, Uh, you know, playing Strive now, but I started on Street Fighter 4 and played all kinds of fighting games at this point, Uh, but I'm still just a very, very competitive gamer in general, like even my the games that I play when I'm trying to relax are like <laughs> the most competitive games. Um, but yeah, that's, that's kind of where I'm at now. And I still, again, like, you know, I've got the Dreamcast on my desk. I just bought a little CRT, which is sitting next to me. Oh. And I'm, I'm like, always need to have that, um, like classic gaming, very accessible to me at all times. So mm-hmm. yeah, I've kind of got those two worlds. Yeah. No, I got the, I found all my super Nintendo games the other day and then the, when the super nt went back on sale i got one. Oh, nice but i barely i used it for nba jam like a few times okay. i haven't yeah but i have like aladdin and all my favorite games yeah when i was a kid but i was nintendo until i think dreamcast and ps2 and then i came back for the switch to nintendo yeah. nice yeah mm-hmm. i uh man i was dying to get one of those analog pockets but yeah i wanted one of those <laughs> <laughs> missed that pre-order mm-hmm um, and then did you did you go to school for art and design and or anything like that or did you teach yourself like everything yeah i mostly kind of figured out on the way there i'm mostly self-taught so i grew up my um, stepdad actually works at microsoft as a designer mm-hmm. and so he would bring strangely enough he would bring max home from microsoft <laughs> um so i grew up like all the way back with I've been using Photoshop since Photoshop one um, and just kind of grew up with Photoshop in my life. 
Mm -hmm. Um, and then later in high school realized that I just really wanted to be a designer and was always self taught for the most part. I went to school in 2000, end of 2006, 2007, I moved to San Francisco to go to the Academy of Art University and I hated it. I was there for six Mm -hmm. months and I absolutely hated it. I learned illustrator and that's pretty much all I needed to learn. And then I moved back home. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, largely like when all my friends were in college, I was like doing Craigslist jobs for, you know, little design jobs here and there. And that's kind of how I learned and eventually ended up getting my first job in games, which was for a HTML five based game company. Um, so that was just like super lucky break for me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, I, I was doing the, when I was doing the ad school, I was um, studying copywriting, but I was like trying to learn all the design like that I could. I was taking the illustrator class and the Photoshop mm-hmm. class and now video editing. And now like with doing my site, I'm using all this stuff again and getting better at it. But oh, nice. yeah. the best way is to just do it. <laughs> or, like yeah, have, absolutely. To have to learn it in a situation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm still learning too. Like I've just, um, I was sort of in and out of school a little bit this past year learning Cinema 4D and I just switched over to, uh, to Blender permanently. So I'm working with a lot of 3D stuff these days too. Mm -hmm. Um, And then I guess what other games have you worked or when you worked on other games, was it mostly, or in the beginning was like the UI stuff or you started moving into other stuff and then creative producer type thing yeah um a lot of my career is working in ui um so like i worked on the html5 games the first one that i worked on was actually supposed to be a Catan mmo Mm -hmm. um and then actually before that was like a a scrabble mmo that we had worked on um and that ended up getting me a job at Microsoft working on Project Spark, um, mm-hmm. which some people remember. Um, and then from there, I you know worked on a Marvel thing at Disney. And after Disney, I was like, I, I actually asked someone when I was working at Disney, I was like, I asked a producer, what will it take for me to become a producer? And can you teach me? And I got some feedback here and there, but I ended up leaving before um, I was able to do any production work at Disney. Mm -hmm. And so when my business partner and I left to work on our own game, I just was fully self-taught after that. Like I learned everything about, you know, Jira and all the boring task management stuff you need to do as a producer and and all of that. And um, we just learned a lot about pitching our game and budgeting and just all kinds of stuff. that you never really see on that, the back end of game development. Um, And then when I got to my last job, it just so happened that a lot of the stuff we were doing revolved around streaming. And again, I kind of dove head first into that and learned everything I could about streaming and uh, all the equipment that goes into it. I built three, four different studios during my time there. Um, and I was the only person working on those. So it was kind of up to me to learn all of that on my own and just set it up and kind of work with what we had. We didn't have much of a budget either. So just whatever we had, I was kind of like throwing stuff together. Um, and you probably saw in my portfolio that like last version of, of the studio that we put together was, mm-hmm. um, was, yeah, was big for me. It was, it was a really fun project to work on. Are you streaming games like? yourself playing your fighting games and the competitive games now or anything like that i'm not really it's funny because i have a whole streaming setup i I have a two pc streaming setup i have you know this camera and lights and the whole thing going on um but i'm i still do production for other people so i just recently did i produced a whole five hour live stream for uh mad cave comics Mm -hmm. um so i'm still doing that for other people and a lot of this is for mostly just video recording and editing, but I really want to get back into it at some point. Like I have, I have a green screen behind me too. Like yeah. <laughs> I have literally everything you could need for streaming. Um, so I'd love to get back into it at some point, but um, yeah, we're just so busy right now. It's going to have to wait until after the console stuff. Yeah. And then the bar you were going to open with your wife, was it like to 
like to go watch esports or but also to play games or mostly just like a bar you go watch like the big competitions and everything yeah i think it was like all of the above mm -hmm. um i think we just wanted something in the area that felt a little more adult i guess is the way to put it um where yeah you can kind of just like go have a drink and watch starcraft if you want or fighting games or, or counter-strike or whatever um, but the plan was also to have a full at the very minimum 10 pc setup or sorry 12 pc setup because overwatch was out at the time mm -hmm. uh later so what we wanted to be able to have was actually kind of like our own in-house yeah, team own events too yeah and there were other esports bars coming up at the same time and mm -hmm. so what we had proposed to some other bars is like we're gonna have our team and maybe you guys can either travel to us or we can travel to you or we can do it remotely um but it would have been fun to have like a cross-country like tournament cool. yeah or league mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah um and then what are you are you just working on the console release of art of rally now or are you working on some other stuff too at the moment, yeah, that's kind of taking up all of our time. Um, we have some, you know, ideas that we're kind of kicking around. Um, but for the most part, yeah, it's just all, there's just so much stuff that goes into just like setting up the storefronts and we're working with a porting company. Mm -hmm. um, so a lot of that is just our focus right now. It's just so much to do. I guess and then is there any big games you're playing right now that you're into or? Maybe you get home and you need a break and you jump into something. Oh man. Or are you just changing all the time what you're playing? Because I kind of do that. <laughs> I try yeah, to stick I, to one game and then I jump around. <laughs> yeah, I feel like I have games that like I'm always coming back to or that my friends are playing. And so I'm gonna get roped into them. So like Apex is the big one that we always yeah. end up playing together. Um right now, because most of my friends are all fighting game players, we're all playing Guilty Gear Strive. Mm -hmm. um which i love i'm really enjoying it and then um i just bought samurai gun 2 which came out today so i'm excited to jump into that um and then i'm just like for some reason i love really really complicated games mm -hmm. <laughs> in my own time so i also mm -hmm. play uh the two games that i always no matter what will go back to are dwarf fortress and rim world Mm -hmm. um so i end up you know once a month i'll go spend a week just playing either <laughs> of those games um when i've got time but yeah it's mostly like i said it's mostly competitive stuff that i end up yeah. playing i end up going back to binding of isaac a lot like i have yeah. it on all my systems and it's always ready like i never yeah. delete it from anywhere <laughs> yeah spelunky is that for me where it's oh, like i bought I've it trying to get everything. into that mm -hmm. yeah cool um well thank you for everything yeah absolutely <laughs> and i'm excited to play the game well i've been playing the game but i'm excited to see it on console and probably try it on switch also or maybe playstation 5 yeah for yeah. sure yeah mm -hmm. if you've got any more questions feel free to send them my way mm -hmm. all right well thanks and good luck yeah thanks so much mm -hmm. all right Bye. take care